What's going on people and welcome to a brand new episode of Too Many Games and Not Enough Time where I get to speak to incredible gamers all across the globe about what games they are playing. Now once again, thank you for all of the love on the channel, thank you for all of the love on the pod. Remember, if you're listening to us over there on Spotify or any of them things, come over to the YouTube and give us a thumbs up and you definitely want to come to the YouTube today because today's guest is a super stylish streamer. I'm talking about the queen of Second Life herself. You've seen her Sims. We're talking thick with a double C. We're talking gaming, beauty, and curiosity. Mila Vanderbilt, welcome to Too Many Games and Not Enough Time. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm very... super. I'm super excited to talk to you, as you can hear. I'm super hyped. Don't worry about me. Um, and I've been checking out your stuff for a while. So really appreciate that you coming on. How's your day going so far? Pretty good. It's early for me over here. Just getting it started. Cool. Well, we're going to get you started with a bang. So the first thing I need to talk to you about is Second Life. Because mm -hmm. you are literally the first person that I... That's how I even knew about you, seeing your Second Life stuff. And I'm thinking, what is this Second Life thing? Proper <laughs> baffled. So is Second Life the same as RP? Is RP and Second Life the same thing? Is it like... Fill us in and, and break down this 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 Second Life experience. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things that's super different for everyone. And I think this is one thing that kind of divides a lot of people who play Second Life. Because I think a lot of people go there with the intent to role play. But honestly, it's just a platform where people can kind of just chat and hang out. And I think that's what it started as, like just a cool hangout space. But within that, people created all these different types of communities. So you'll see... People like me, like I create cities there for people to specifically role play. So it's kind of like, kind of like GTA role play for anyone who does that. Um, but then there are just people who kind of will DJ, they'll create clothing, they'll just chill out. So it varies. So from the technical aspect, the, the actual game itself, what is this game built off? Is it built off GTA or is this just built off like a metaverse place where people can come and chill? Yeah, it's just a metaverse. And I think they call themselves like the first metaverse that ever existed because I forget they're like maybe 20 years old at this point. So when they first came around, no one was doing anything similar. So a lot of people don't even call it a game. They just call it a metaverse, just an open source kind of platform. But yeah. And it's proper sick because it's not even just like obviously people are doing in RP, people are living out their fantasies, whether they're being a drug dealer or they're rapping or their i don't know taxi man you get me some yeah. man want to be a taxi man <laughs> and drive people around but second life people are actually having like full-on relationships and yeah. stuff like that so it's 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 literally a whole second life experience so firstly i want to know how did you even get into it yeah, so I was in undergrad at university and one of my friends was doing a sociology paper on it because I think this is a time where MTV did a special on it and it was like some girl that was addicted to Second Life. So she was like playing music and she was in there and that was like her entire life. She was very rarely doing things in the real world. So one of my friends did this paper on it and I didn't pay any attention to it until like a few years later and I was like graduated and working and then bored and I wasn't really into gaming anymore. Like I just kind of lost touch with all of that. So I was like, well, let me just check this out see what it is and I popped in and it was like a super weird space but it was fun and I remember back then like things were really simple like things looked terrible especially in comparison to other games like I think The Sims 2 was still like the thing back then um and it just in comparison looked like trash but it was a lot of fun to be able to like meet people and I think that's the demand because like in The Sims 2 you couldn't hang out with your friends but in Second Life it was very similar and you could so that's what kept that's me that's something that I feel like if EA don't do some kind of community online thing with Sims 5, they are missing yeah, out on yeah. the huge as well. Because I feel like the Second Lives, the, obviously RP is a bit of a different game, but I think people are loving that 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 online experience. Like mm -hmm. It blows my mind that GTA is now an MMO. 
Oh, I know. Yeah. And that's what's crazy. Like, I only just discovered like GTA roleplay maybe a year ago. And I've honestly been off of it for like four months. I finally got back on yesterday. And I'm like, there are elements about that that I think are even better for roleplay than Second Life, which is crazy because it seems more restrictive. But um, yeah, it's it's been crazy. <laughs> it, it, it's so dope. And it, it proper, um, I'm like proper curious about it because... Um, obviously I've worked in gaming for uh, a while and I'm playing video games all of the time and I'm always banging out something for a review or like I'm a JRPG guy so I'm getting lost in these worlds with hundreds of hours and even for me who this is my life and I eat I eat and breathe it even for me it's like what's going on over there like what are they doing <laughs> over there like I'm, I'm I'm mad baffled and um love watching your videos so let's take it back a little piece Let's take it back and talk a little bit a bit about Little Mila when you was younger because um, you said you took a long time away from gaming, a good 15 year hiatus from playing video games. Yeah. How did you first get into gaming? What's the games that kind of um, grabbed you when you was little piece? When I was little, so I am... Um... My siblings are way older than me. So my siblings are like 20 years older than me, but all their kids are my age. And I had a bunch of nephews. So my sister has a, you know, a bunch of sons and they were all like brothers to me. And they were huge into like all the basketball games. They were always popping by my house and they were like coming with their PlayStations and their different consoles. But um, I was never good at any of those. So I remember like I was asking them other games that I could play. They always like directed me to the sims they were like play some sims i remember at one point i had like a mary kate and ashley game like very little silly games um but the sims caught me for years and i remember there was a sims there was this game called driver back then which kind of reminds me of gta um there was this game called like fighting force so i like things that i could play with other people that were like a bit competitive but like didn't require too much for me because i i still to this day say i'm trash at games but <laughs> it's still fun to do um and then i, I just that. like kind of got busy with school and stuff and left alone i love how you own it driver was a sick <laughs> game you know it like was, driver, was, yeah. <laughs> driver was a sick game and a lot of people sleep on that game and like yeah. that was a proper old school so that was like kind of your start in gaming and then life got in the way studying dating mm -hmm. clubs yeah. all of that how did that 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 buzz of gaming come back because that's it's such a weird thing i feel like all of us have a time that as adults we just kind of like we just need to we're just living life in it yeah. and even me i've always gained my life but gaming was not a huge part of my life mm -hmm. in certain points so what was it that kind of got you back in yeah so i mean i think i went full-blown hustle mode when i got out of school like i started a business i was doing fashion design and i was starting to work in tech and i just felt like life was just so serious like i was working non-stop i was socializing a little bit but like i think you know i'm very much a homebody so i like being at home a lot so i was like, i need to find something that's like not me just sitting at home working all day so i found that it was easy to like pop on my pc and play a game in between and this was like my first time i ever did any type of PC gaming because at this point I had only had consoles forever but I was like PC games are easy like in between meetings I could slip in and play a game and no one's gonna know anything um so that's kind of how I transitioned back into it but even then like I remember after that period of time then I moved to LA and this was like a whole different game I was out in the world didn't want to be at home at all so I kind of took a even longer break and then the pandemic hit and I was just like at home all the time so you know it was just something to do well, I've been watching so much of your content and it's super, super dope. Firstly, I want to give you a huge congratulations that you've only been on Twitch since last year and you've built such a dope community and channel. And one of the things that I notice about watching your streams is it is very kind of community based. How, how did this come about? How did you build such a dope community that help you through games when yeah. you're on a struggle <laughs> <laughs> i definitely think um second life probably helped a lot so i remember when i launched my channel i had launched discord and second life is just one of those games that's or it's a platform that's just hard to figure out like people log in they don't get it um so originally my discord served as this place where if people were struggling 
other people could help them. Cause I've never been real good at doing the one-on-one -on -one things. So I'm always just like, we need kind of a group of people to help. So my discord started growing, I think faster than my channel. Like I think even now we have a couple of thousand people in there. And at that point, like my channel only had like a hundred or so subscribers, but there were so many people on discord. Um, and then I just found like mixing, doing just what I like to do in games with helping people figure out how I do what I do. So whether it's streaming or, you know, playing SL or, you know, even when I started my Twitch, I was just getting into GTA. So trying to figure out how to help other people do the same things that I'm doing um, was just a really cool way to bring us all together. And people were really supportive of it. That's dope, man. So I see you getting back into Sims. You, 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 you went and built your first Sim again. <laughs> first thing I've got to say to you is, See your screen, your desktop, it gives me anxiety. How you got so much stuff up there? I'm like, how, do, how does she even know what's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, first of all, that's chaos. But over here is pure chaos. But I'm trying, I'm trying to like clean it up, make it neat. But during the day, so this serves as like my work office and like my streaming office. So it gets crazy during the day. <laughs> how have you found jumping um, back into Sims? It's been cool. Um, that's, I think, literally the first game I ever played in my life. And I always say, like, The Sims Busting Out is still my all-time favorite game ever because it was just, like, silly and fun. Um, so it's been fun. I remember I tried to play The Sims maybe a year ago over on Twitch, and it was just, like, overwhelming. Like, I didn't know what CC was. I didn't know that was a thing. So trying to figure out that and mods was a bit much. But um, this time around, I'm just, like, taking my time. I'm kind of figuring things out, letting my audience, you know, hold my hand and teach me how to do things so it's been fun this time it's so funny so i've been a console gamer my whole life and um sims is always my it's like my little secret escape game so mm -hmm. it's a game that i play when i ain't doing no content i'm not mm -hmm. thinking anything and i love like the island living and i'll try, try to recreate jamaica and i'll have my yard simmer and stuff like that and I doing a campaign with Cyberpower this year mm -hmm. and they built me like this crazy PC rig and um, Final Fantasy, that's my big game. Like, mm -hmm. I love Final Fantasy. And that's the game that made me start learning about modding. Um, oh, and I started getting like um, outfits for Cloud and Tifa and stuff. And I, and I had a little bit, I was like, I'm not going to touch Sims. I'm not, I'm not going <laughs> to go. I'm not putting Sims on my PC. I'm just not. Oh, yeah. And I had that little voice in me, you know, you're going to in it. Yeah. No, you're gonna. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, cool. And I got it. And I was so confused. Like, I, I didn't know what I was doing. And um, lucky enough, Ebonix is like one of my friends. So I had to hit her up. And I'm like, I'm putting the stuff in the mods folder, but it's not working. <laughs> so she jumps on the Discord with me and she's like, no, my, that's, 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 no, you're in the game folder. You need to go to the document. <laughs> and I'm like, why is everyone on YouTube telling me to go in the game folder? <laughs> and it was proper proper complex for me and it's weird because a lot of people this is just normality to them and but when you're new it is kind of overwhelming do you feel like people who are new to second life have that same kind of experience yeah it's intense and like it's funny because like my pc is suffering right now trying to manage second life and the sims but um it's very similar because I think even when I started to get into the flow of The Sims, I was like, oh, this is just like Second Life. Like these folders, that's what our inventory is in Second Life. And I think like once you grasp that, it kind of makes things easier. But I was the same. I couldn't figure out how to install things. And I was like, oh, I'm just packing things into folders and I can organize my folders. And that looks just like what a Second Life inventory is. And when you think about what objects are in Second Life, they're the same. They're basically CC, but you pay for them <laughs> um, heavily. But yeah, it's very similar. But I think even harder. I think the Second Life platform is just naturally hard. So beyond just like what your character looks like, I think trying to walk around, figure out where to go, figure out where other people are can be a bit challenging. So that's initially what I wanted my videos to kind of serve as just some help with people who are just like logging in for the first time. Yeah, I remember watching you get back in your car and even you was confused. You was like, yeah. <laughs> how do I even drive this thing anymore? Yeah, it's great. And then like, that's the other thing too. So. The entire world is created by other residents or other people who play. So everyone could create something completely different, like the way someone creates a car and how the mechanics of that car are going to be completely different from the next place. And, you know, walking into a house could be even a different experience than how someone else builds it. So literally every single thing in there is just completely different. So there's no like standard of how things work. Oh, my God. That just <laughs> sounds like stress. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
One of the things I want to ask you is you've been using the TSRCC manager mm -hmm. um, and I was looking into that for SimCC. How do you find it? Because I, I, I've I downloaded like all of this hair and these clothes and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what's what. I don't know what's broken. And then yeah. when I saw that the other day, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. How are you finding it? Yeah, um, one of a person I know from Second Life who is actually a creator in Second Life. I don't know if they create for The Sims, but they use it heavily. And I was like, this is what I want to use. Like everyone's talking about it. Like Patreon has better things and all of this stuff. But I was like, the CC manager is so easy. Like you can see pictures in there. If I want to remove something, I can. I know exactly what's coming out. Um, but yeah, it's way easier for me anyway. Just not knowing what I'm doing to use. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm fully on that. Like that's that's gonna be my next move. Yeah. All right. So obviously we've spoken a lot about um, Second Life and Sims, but I want to know what other type of games are ones that kind of grab you. Now, obviously you've been streaming for a while now, and streaming becomes quite a big commitment. And there are certain games that are wonderful to stream and other games you just want to kind of have like a little personal experience and just enjoying your own. So is there any games in the last few years that either one you started and you kind of enjoyed on your own and you really love or something that you really want to play and say, Do you know, what? when I get some me time, I want to kind mm -hmm. of really sink my teeth into. Yeah. So um, I've gotten very heavily into gta um i think i played like story mode for the first time last summer and then i got into gta rp but um i think it's honestly anything that's set in la tends to draw me and it just it looks so much like la that that's what was so fun to play at first but i've gotten better at it like when i first got into it i couldn't even move the car i couldn't shoot anything so now i'm kind of really into games where i can drive and just shoot recklessly all day um so I've been playing a lot of GTA. I've been, I just got into Call of Duty maybe like a month ago. And that's just been fun to connect with. Just like some friends that I know online. So that's my new thing. I haven't streamed it yet. I'm hoping to stream it soon. But that's kind of been taking up a lot of my free time. So you proper like that. You like, you basically want to be able to go and live out your life in LA, but just go reckless. Yeah, like, exactly. Because literally, you can't just go wrecky in LA in real life. You just <laughs> right. want to drive on the wrong side of the road, yep. bust a shot at someone you don't <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm in here robbing convenience stores. Like I got on, so I've been off GTA for like four months because I had surgery and I had to just take some time away from my computer. But I get on last night and I'm up to like two o'clock in the morning with no one else in my server. I'm just running around my server by myself, blowing up gas stations and robbing convenience stores. And I'm like, just the chaos is fun. So. That's super dope. How does it feel to be so saturated back in gaming now? Like obviously you took that such a long time and now you're just kind of, live eating and breathing gaming again yeah it's um it's fun it's overwhelming and it's funny because i haven't quite figured out how to balance like people in my real life knowing that about me versus online like i think it's just a comfortable thing and the people that i meet online are also into gaming there's no one that i know in real life that's into gaming at all except for like maybe my nephews but they play like a little bit 2k and then that's pretty much it um so it's, it's been weird to balance especially socially because it's like you know, you kind of want to do things related to gaming, especially in LA, there's so many events around it. I'm like, a lot of people that I just know in real life are not interested in going. So it's been cool though, just to meet people in this community, like solely. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a, I think socially, that's been the biggest change. Yeah, that's interesting you say that, because that was going to be one of my questions that I asked you, like, how do people in your real life peripheral will actually deal with you being like this super gamer and living this whole <laughs> new life in um second life are they looking at you like you know what are you up to fam yeah i think um originally th th at first yes absolutely they were like especially second life because that was just something no one understood so i remember i did a video where i had like four or five of my like college friends just come hang out with me in second life and like I logged one in, we created an avatar for her. I kind of talked them through the whole experience and they understood it. I think from just a first glance, just because I think all of us take ourselves way too serious. And I think that's why I really like gaming. You know, like a few of my friends are lawyers. A lot of us are in tech. Some of us are in business. And it's just like, we take ourselves so serious and don't have any of this like just silly playtime. And I think a lot of people in my real life kind of get that. Like they want to let loose and just like do something a little fun um, but they haven't had the experience, so I think they completely understand it, but none of them are kind of really getting into it. <laughs> but that's, that's so important. And escapism is like, when you speak to a lot of gamers, 
that's what 90% of us say. We want to escape, mm-hmm. like be able to go into a different world. Like the reason why I, I love a Final Fantasy is because I'm not out here holding no big buster yeah. sword and, <laughs> and, and chopping up people and, and doing um, backflips and, and stuff like that. And like you say, being able to just, yeah, just be silly. Just go and rob yeah. a liquor store in, in, in LA playing GTA, knowing that you don't have to go and do that in real life and, and end yeah. up in, in a cell for the rest of your life. So right. I feel that, that, that kind of time to kind of let your hair down and express yourself is super important. Mila, we're running out of time. Like we're only a short form podcast. Um, but on your channel, what's really interesting to me is obviously you show a lot of gameplay of Second Life or of Sims and stuff like that. But you also give a lot of advice and kind of helping people. So if someone is watching you and they're like, well, I like her swag, you know, I like her style. Like she's super stylish. She speaks well. She knows what she's talking about. If you wanted to kind of speak to someone who see you and kind of looking up to you and be like, look, I'd like to kind of get into the streaming. I'd like to start, get back into gaming. Maybe someone that hasn't gamed for a while. What advice would you give to someone? Yeah, I think um, just honestly, just completely dive into it head first. I'm one of those people that's just a big overthinker. And even like now, there's content that I want to create and games I want to play. And I'm like, oh, I'll do it soon. Or I'll, I put it off terribly just because I'm like, I'm trying to think of making it perfect. Um, when I started streaming, like my stream was terrible. I didn't know anything about OBS. Like my audio was trash. I had this weird Nikon camera because my webcam was being weird. Like everything was just terrible. And the more you do it, just the more comfortable you get with it. Like even with me in gaming, I thought because I'm bad at games and I tend to be on the losing side that that was gonna be something that would like hold me back in streaming. But I'm just like, you know, just do it, have fun. Don't overthink it. Don't think you have to be good at anything. Just have a good time because at the end of the day, like your your audience is gonna find you and other people that wanna game the way you game are gonna find you. So just kind of stick to being yourself. Stick to being yourself. That is the sickest advice ever. Mila, thank you so much for joining me. I could have spoken to you all day, but we're only a short form podcast. If people are feeling your energy, feeling your vibe, feeling your swag, because you're super stylish, (laughs) where would you send them to go and check out your content? Yeah, definitely over on YouTube. It's just youtube.com slash Mila Vanderbilt. And I'm on Instagram a bit. I'm trying to get into it, but yeah. (laughs) either of those (laughs) you've been fighting instagram for a while haven't you i have it's like instagram tiktok none of those it's just hard for me to stay consistent but like i'm on youtube i'm getting back into twitch in a few weeks so i'll be there too amazing thank you so much for staying to the end of the video like i said go and check out mila's content it's super dope and yeah when you go and watch the second life stuff you're going to be baffled just like i am make sure you leave a comment in the video below can't even talk (laughs) let me know if you know about second life and if you are busting to rp thanks again for staying to the end i've been mr midas she'd be mila you've been the mvps We out of here. Peace.